This copyrighted telecast of the Western Athletic Conference may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcast without the express written consent of the WAC Digital Network. Tonight, the Wolverines of Utah Valley at home taking on longtime rival Chicago State. It's the Cougars and the Wolverines. Cat Scratch Fever coming your way next right here on UBU TV. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. Sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It is about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. CCU Center on the campus of Utah Valley University. We're about 45 minutes south of Salt Lake City, where tonight the Wolverines of Utah Valley playing host to Chicago State, the Cougars. Two teams uh, so far sort of struggling in this early part of uh, the WAC conference season. Hello again, everybody. Jim McCullough, Matt Peterson. All right, so Matt, you played enough games. What happens when you got two teams that really aren't having the type of year they want to have, and now all of a sudden they're going head to head? Yeah, I think what you really have to have is you got to keep fighting. You know, you never really know what game, especially this early in the conference, as you said, you never know what game you'll start to play your best basketball and set yourself up for the rest of the conference. So you have to just keep fighting, trust your coaches, trust the game plan, and hope that it turns your way. Yeah, Chicago State hasn't won a game on the road. UVU 2-2 two and two in conference. And if you look at the standings, I mean, UVU's really not out of this thing. They're only one game out in the loss column to New Mexico State, and UVU actually has the tiebreaker over Seattle. Kansas City coming in here on set. So really, it's still wide open. Yeah, there's a lot to play. And, you know, we talk about a game in and game out, Jim, the, the importance of your home games at your place. Right. Uh, and so that place is even more important because the Wolverines are going to have to travel on the road to play Chicago State. So got to take right. care of business here. All right. So the, to take care of business tonight, key players for the Wolverines, Matt. Yeah, Dante Williams. I, I've been so impressed with how he's played lately. Uh, so he's one of the key players, Mitch Bruniel the other. Uh, strong play from these two at the guard and wing position. And I, I think Dante's playing with more confidence than I've seen him play. 
He's been a real, real stud for the Wolverines lately. And Mitch Benil has carried them on offense uh, for most of the year. So uh, we'll see how these two players complement each other tonight. Yeah, between them, uh, 23 points a game. Now, key players for Chicago State, uh, they've started uh, 13 different players this season. They're just looking for a couple of guys that can do some magic. Yeah, absolutely. Clark Rosenberg, he's a senior guard. He leads them in scoring about 11.5 points per game. And you have Trayvon Palmer, who averages about 7.5 points per game. But you see it's kind of a guard matchup, and a lot of what Chicago State does is going to be driven by the guard play. So how the Wolverines match up with these two players will be key tonight. All right, talking about the keys, uh, we always look forward to this part of the pregame show. Matt Peterson's keys to victory for Utah Valley. Yeah, you've got to have a very strong bench performance. We, we've we come to expect and know what we're going to get from the starters for the Wolverines. The bench has to come along with them. They've got to attack the boards, both offensively and defensively. A lot of life for the Wolverines uh, when they attack on offense. And... They've got to have good shot selection. I think that for the season, the most part, they, they do a good job of working the ball, being patient, taking a good shot, being unselfish. And then they've got to get to the free throw line. When the Wolverines can get to the line, they can get some easy early opportunities, get Chicago State in foul trouble, and uh, get themselves some momentum. All right, we'll hold you those keys throughout the game, Matthew. Utah Valley 7-11, Chicago State 4-17. We'll take a quick break. When we get back, your starting lineups and your opening tip. Coming up next right here from Orem, Utah on UVU TV. Utah Valley introducing their starting lineups. One senior, two juniors, a sophomore, and a freshman. Marcel Davis at point guard for the Wolverines. Dante Williams at shooting guard. Mitch Bruniel at power forward. Zach Nelson at the other forward spot. And Boston Gubler will start at center. The freshman out of Laverne, Utah. It is the fifth, excuse me, the fourth different starting lineup that Coach Dick Hunsaker has used this season. But the fifth straight game, Matt Peterson, that these five have started together. Evidently, Coach feels pretty confident with these five. Yeah, I mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, you know, these players have got a lot of playing time. They've started a lot of games. I think the, the coaches, the players, us, everybody that's watched the Wolverines are becoming, uh, know what to expect from this group. Meanwhile, the starting lineup for Chicago State, Joshua Meyer, Trayvon Palmer, Jared Demakos, Joshua Batson, and Clark Rosenberg. They're averaging 58 points a game. That's uh, dead last in the whack offensively. But you know what? UVU, seventh in the whack in scoring. So you got the two lowest scoring teams in the whack going head to head. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. That just means they're deliberate in what they do. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you know, you, you look at both teams, how they play. This is not the first time that Coach Hensaker and Coach Dildy have played against one another. And so, you know, we know that they try and you know, work the ball, be patient, get the best shot possible. And as you said, it's how they play. They're very deliberate. They know what they want to, to try and get on offense. Actually, it's the 15th time that these two have met. UVU with an 11-3 edge in the series, having won the last six straight. But you know what? A couple years ago in the Great West Conference Tournament up in Chicago is Chicago State winning. Not many players from UVU left from two years ago. UVU's first possession. Zach Nelson. Foul quickly. Pretty aggressive defense to start from Chicago State in a man-to-man, -man. and you see the, the size advantage that the Wolverines are going to have inside Chicago State going with a very small lineup. See if the Wolverines try and exploit that, get some post-ups inside, some touches for their big guys. 
Chicago State, 6'4", 6'5", 6'4", along with Joshua Myers, 6'8". That's exactly right. You have a size advantage, get that ball inside. Really nice job. Boston taking his time. Knew he had the size advantage, knocked down the jumper. A good start for him. So the Wolverines of Utah Valley draw first blood at home. We've seen him play lights out at home, and we've seen him play not so good against Grand Canyon at home here on their last home game. On the run, Mitch Bernil stripped away. Senior from Boise, Idaho. Wanted to finish up with a flourish on that one, I'm sure. Terrific start. Nice hands, getting the deflection. Marcel doing a nice job of pushing that ball off of the turnover. Get an isolation here from Marcel. Takes it all the way. Chicago State with the rebound. And given there with Meyer being somehow switched out onto Marcel. Jumper for three. Missed by Demakos. Dante Williams, one of your key players in this game. No shot for him. Marcel driving in again. And another Chicago State foul. This one's going to be against Joshua Meyer. Marcel's and that's his second foul already. Yeah, real quick fouls. And uh, Marcel's seen a couple of matchups go his way. I'm not sure if. I haven't been able to tell if Chicago State's doing some switching on their defensive possessions, but you had, for whatever reason, the, the, the big guy, so to speak, inside for Chicago State, Joshua Meyer, getting switched out on Marcel the last two possessions, and Marcel taking advantage of it with his, his active drives. Three nothing, Utah Valley. Coming up on two minutes deep in this game. Chicago State looking for their first points of the evening. Palmer lost the handle momentarily. There's your turnover. You see what Chicago State's done here, Jim. They're first few possessions were a man-to-man -man defense. They're now going to a zone, probably to try and stop those drives. So the Wolverines will now set up and run their zone offense. Wow, nice feed. Boston Googler to Marcel Davis. That was very interesting. I think Chicago State switched into a man mid-possession as they tried to deny the ball for Marcel up top. Marcel with a great read and backdoor cut, easy layup. Batson misses the jumper for Chicago State. Wide open, Zach Nelson. <laughs> it's an 8-0 start. Tracy Dildy, head coach of Chicago State, calls a quick timeout to put a stop to that. Nothing more frustrating than going on a road, going on the road and watching the home team just come out lightning fast. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's, it's been a perfect start for UVU so far. They've got what they wanted on offense, but you couple that with what they've done on defense. You know, the Wolverines are going to make this game. Chicago State, I think, on offense wants to make it a perimeter game. You look at all of their leading scores, their you know guards, guard slash forward positions. They don't really have a presence inside, and on their early offensive possessions, they're not really trying to post anybody up. They're just doing a five-man motion, a lot of screens. A lot of flare screens on the ball screens, and the Wolverines have done a tremendous job of defending it. So you have to have good help. You also have to have really good on-ball defense, and the Wolverines have had that. Played three minutes here in this whack contest. Long jumper, Sean Hill. Missed that one. It'll remain Chicago State basketball. Wolverines can keep Chicago State out of the paint. That would be a 
terrific advantage for them. Chicago State on the year is only a 29% three-point shooting team. Whistle away from the ball. Alex Carr, who checked in during that timeout, called for the foul. Yeah, flex screen looked like being set on the baseline. Alex, a little bit late getting through that, gets called for the foul. Would you call it a flex screen? Yeah, it's kind of the flex offense as you're going to get another foul here, I think, on Dante. Yeah, a flex screen where you have a man in the corner, a, a man sets a screen kind of parallel to the baseline, and he cuts across, cuts across the baseline, and Alex was card called. The, there's the forearm there that Dante got called for. <laughs> Back to live action. I know, Jim, because I've I've seen plenty of those and been uh, been called for plenty of those forearm fouls. Marcel Davis being called for the foul. Basket will count. Well, Chicago State finally on the board. 16-26 to play first half. I imagine the, the lessons and the preparation from this whole week leading up to this game was going to be about driving the driving offense that Chicago State wants to run and defending the drive. How well can UVU do that? I imagine that was large in their preparation this week. You're seeing some backcourt pressure from Chicago State. I'm guessing they saw the film from Saturday night's game in Las Cruces, New Mexico, where UVU just had all sorts of trouble getting the ball across midcourt during the first half. It was three or four straight turnovers, but that turnaround jumper puts UVU out in front by seven. Yeah, some really good screening. Boston Goobler set a couple really nice screens. Zach Nelson set one. I, I believe Alex Carr set one as well. Really good job of screening Marcel to get him open on the wing. And here, Again, to try and stop that dribble penetration, the Wolverines switch as they give up the long three there from Jared Demacus. But the Wolverines played a 2-3 zone, so they had initially been playing that man-to-man. -man. They switched to the 2-3. Boston Goobler taking it in himself, twisting, turning. What a move by the big man. And just like that, Boston Goobler has tied his career high. I mean, he's just a freshman. He's only started five games. He had four points against Texas Pan Am. He's got four already tonight here in the first what, four and a half minutes. I would imagine that in the game plan, there wasn't going to be a play drawn up where Boston <laughs> has an isolation at the free throw line, but what a terrific move. Great skill. Highlight reel, Boston Goobler, jumper, three, Dante missed it. Zach Nelson rebound. Pace is picked up here. This has been good for both teams, I think. Chicago State switching up their defenses. Kind of in a man, may switch to his own. Marcel takes it in and somehow got it up and in between two defenders. I think Demagos even hit that ball. It looked like he knocked it, put some spin on it, helped it get off the glass. He almost tipped that in. But again, Marcel hurting Chicago State with his driving ability. He's already got seven points. He just had two Saturday night against New Mexico State. You think uh, he's been sort of sitting around just waiting for this one to start? He Another looks three. Like it. Wolverines with the rebound. Dante Williams, little contact blocking foul, Chicago State. Dante will be at the line shooting two. That'll bring us to our first media timeout of the evening, Utah Valley. Right now, out in front by eight. Good sportsmanship isn't defined by a scoreboard. It isn't defined by how high you jump or how fast you can run. Good sportsmanship is all about character. It is about doing your best for your coaches and teammates. It is about having respect for your opponents, the officials, and the fans. Good sportsmanship is winning with class and losing with dignity. It's fair play, perseverance, and team spirit. Good sportsmanship is what unites us. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Well, UVU comes out. We mentioned we called it light lightning. Well, maybe not lightning. Six out of eight shooting is 75%, but Chicago State struggling early, but they're two of eight, including a three-pointer. Eight-point lead for Utah Valley. Marcel Davis right now, the story, Matt, seven yep. points. You know, and uh, you know, I, I love the fact that the Wolverines, six of eight, they on their six field goals that they've made, they've assisted on four of those. I, I was talking to you and, and, and made the comment a little bit earlier that you just look at that lineup that Chicago State started the game with. It's a smaller lineup. They don't have a big guy 
quote, big guy, unquote, in the game. And that has really helped the Wolverines. And you see Marcel being so aggressive, pushing it, driving it into the paint. Uh, you know, eight points in the paint, eight of the 14 points in the paint for UVU. So I think that you see that as a player. You see that, you know, there's not really a shot blocker. There's not someone who's going to contest my shot. If I can break down the original defender, I don't have anybody really in there that's going to contest my shot. And you have options when you drive. You can finish or you can kick. And uh, Marcel's found the balance between those two. That foul was on Anthony Glover of Chicago State. It was his first. Mar so Marcel Davis has seven points. The rest of the UVU team has seven as well. Three from Zach Nelson and four from Boston Goobler. And I really like how UVU is pushing the ball in transition. You know, if you can get a rebound off of a long three or a turnover, the, the Wolverines are doing a great job of getting an outlet pass deep, meaning you pass it out, your outlet pass is near the half court line, and you're off and running. Now I know Dante Williams' mom is probably thinking, he didn't say anything about my son. I didn't jinx him, okay? I didn't say a word about it. He missed a free throw. But he is the wax number one free throw shooter coming in here. Let me just say that now. Wow, look at Eric gets pretty physical inside all of a sudden. Chicago State basketball, they still have 16 seconds on their shot clock. And on the flip side, when you go with a guard heavy lineup like Chicago State does, is see the replay here. Good job of battling inside. You get Zach coming up, just timing his jump. It's really hard for smaller guys, guards, to be inside and to score if you have you know a shot blocker or the threat of a shot blocker inside, which the Wolverines will have. Jaden Jackson into the game, as is Brendan Evans for Utah Valley. Five seconds to shoot. Wow, long NBA three won't go. Tesmer pulled down the rebound and a foul against Utah Valley. Brendan Evans. Yeah, good job of you know, the initial defense causing the shot clock you know, long, a long three with, uh, with two seconds left. Good effort inside for Brendan. I, I think Tesmer's going to have a, an impact because you know, got the foul trouble for the inside players so far for Chicago State. I think Tesmer's probably going to see some good minutes here. 14 fouls against UVU, three against Chicago State. Jumper outside won't go. Chicago State now two of 12 shooting from the floor. Evans inside, turnaround jump won't go. Got his rebound and got hammered to the floor. That one's going to go against Sean Hill of Chicago State. That'll be his first. You know, Tracy Dildy of Chicago State has played I mentioned earlier, he's started 13 different players, but he's played 18 different players this season. It's astounding how many kids have seen action for the Cougars as he's giving everybody a chance to show them what, what they got. Yeah. Trying to find something that works. Obviously, the struggles that they've had, you, you, you do whatever you can, try and find whatever works for you. Mitch Bruniel took it away, starts to drive in. Wolverine basketball getting a little sloppy. Dante Williams to set up the offense. Seven minutes gone in this one. It's 15-6. Going to go a 1-4 flat here, Jim. We're just going to give Dante a lot of space to create. And the shot was blocked, but they're going to call a foul on Chicago State. Jesse Tesmer. Nice crossover move here from Dante sizing up. Marcos and a great, uh, great hard effort to hard finish there for Dante. We've seen that set a couple times. I believe that's the second time. Marcel had it a little bit earlier when he was when he had a switch out up top, and the Wolverines just go with a 1-4 set. You get four guys down on the baseline, give your ball handler a ton of room, a uh, ton of space to create, and uh, the Wolverines have, have uh, had some success with that, that set so far. Maybe I jinx Dante when I don't talk about his free throw shooting. There's, there's no maybe about it, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> 16 to 6, UVU out by 10. It's their biggest lead here in the first half. They haven't trailed as they jumped out early, 8 0. Finish there from Demacos. 
Chicago State no longer going to put the pressure on because the Wolverines have beat it. But that's what UV is going to have to defend against, that spacing. Marcel with the open shot here, but Brendan Evans going to get a foul call, I believe. That's going to be on Clark Rosenberg. Rosenberg's first, team's sixth. You know, if you're a big guy, you look at this with the smaller lineup, like we said, it's a great opportunity to pound, pound the glass. That was one of our, our keys of the game, you know, attack the boards. You have size, just get inside, get good position. You can dominate the boards. Zach Nelson triple teamed inside, and somebody reached in and got him on the arm. And foul against Kurt Caress. I think they had their choice on this one. Now the official, Karras had his back to the official, and that's what happened. You get called and you get your back to the guy. This was one of the other keys to the game. We talked about the Wolverines being able to get to the free throw line. 12 minutes left in the first half, and the Wolverines are already in the bonus every time they get fouled. So that just tells me, as a player, your, your antenna's up because you're saying, you know, I can be aggressive, I can drive, try and draw contact. If I get fouled, I'm at the line. The aggressiveness can pick up here. UVU's last four points have come from the free throw line as they've only missed or only made one of their last six shots from the floor. Chicago State cuts it to eight. And Demacus there with another aggressive drive. They're getting him the ball on the wings. Nice finish there, or attempt there from Brendan. But uh, Demacos uh, being very aggressive on offense, coming off a lot of screens, trying to get to the rim. He's converted some, some baskets for Chicago State. Wolverines haven't trailed yet. They lead by eight. UVU has missed their last five shots in a row. Despite that, they still have an eight-point lead over Chicago State because Chicago State yet to really warm up. Just 28% shooting on four of 14. First of two games this week here at home for Utah Valley. They'll play again Saturday. Kansas City comes in here, and it's going to be a very late start compared to what UVU fans are used to. 8.30 start Saturday night because it's televised by the new American Sports Network. They're bringing their broadcast crew in here to do it. it means Matt and I, you and I, get to, uh, we'll do radio only that night. Sounds great. You don't have to wear a tie or anything. That's even better. <laughs> <laughs> or you can just forget it like I did. Chicago State basketball. Rosenberg. Alex Carr with the rebound. Marcel Davis. Starts the drive, goes off to Dayon Goodman. He's fouled before he can get anything going. It seems like to me they're calling this pretty darn close, Matt. Yeah, they are. You know, especially in the Wolverines' favor so far. Nice pass here for Marcel. Good, strong move into the middle there by Dayon. But that's another example of you get the ball and you outlet it quickly. Alex did a nice job of probing the defense early on, passing it ahead to Marcel, pushing the action. And I've seen a lot of times Chicago State has collapsed or their defense has gone to one side of the ball, which has opened up a lot of room inside for the bigs, for you view. Dayon missed it, so it's 18, it remains 18 to 10. This is a very perimeter-oriented offense here. A lot of... For Chicago State? Yeah. You get Alex Carr. Another foul on Alex. That's going to be number two. First Wolverine with two. And I say perimeter-oriented because it starts out on the perimeter, but they have driven six of uh, Chicago State's ten points have come in the paint. But what they do is they get their... You get a lot of space on the perimeter, get it into their guards, and they're doing a lot of on-ball screens and, and double screens, and then they get space and drive just like that. It's what we mentioned about defending the drive. Chicago State's creating space for their guys on the perimeter in a various, you know, various ways, and then they're, they're just driving when the opportunity presents itself. Jaden Jackson being whistled for his first, team's sixth. 14 fouls called already in this game, eight on Chicago State. Six on UVU. So now all of a sudden we've still got almost 11 minutes left. 
No telling how many free throws we're going to end up with. Chicago State going back to this, going back to this pressure. I think UV's done a terrific job of handling it. Let's see what they fall back into, what defense looks like back into a man. Davis again takes it to the hole, dishes off to Goodman. He goes right up, missed it. Chicago State on the run the other way. Karras goes over to Rosenberg. Watch their offense here. They're getting their guards out on the perimeter. On ball screens, just creating a ton of space. They get the ball into the high post here, and they run guys off of him. Williams with the turnaround jumper, just finally gets the shooter's bounce to go down. And it's a 6-0 run for Chicago State. UVU led 18-8. Now it's 18-14. Bounce play here to Brennan. And Coach Dick Hunsaker is pretty much aware of what's going on. And here comes four starters back into the game. Surprised he went so deep to the bench that early? Not necessarily. You know, I thought they did some good things uh, when they came in. I think uh, Coach probably senses a little bit of momentum building for Chicago State. Wants to, uh, wants to put an end to that. Starting five for UVU now on the floor together again. Three starters out there for Chicago State right now. And another foul, this one against Aaron Williams. Terrific screen there from Zach Nelson. He did a wonderful job of setting himself allowing Marcel to come off of him. Number 10, uh, Kurt Karras gets knocked off on the screen. But you know, Chicago State, they're trying to extend their pressure. That's evident by the full court press that they're having. And by extending their pressure, they themselves are become, becoming pretty aggressive. And you know, a little too aggressive. They're getting too aggressive as far as how far out they're guarding Wolverines. Marcel Davis stops that 6 nothing run. Wolverines now switching up their defense back to the 2 3. Hanging jumper from Palmer. Boss and Goobler with the rebound. Nine points already for Marcel Davis. Chicago State started that possession in his own, immediately just switched to the man. So the Wolverines call a set to run it against his own. They're struggling a little bit because when Chicago State switches to the man, the Wolverines then have to change their play call. Chicago State coming up with a nice steal, long lead pass. That's Demakos. Wolverines' first turnover of the night cost them two points. Just a four-point Utah Valley lead. Joined us late. UVU jumped out 8-0. Has led this entire first half. Zach Nelson, he gets the bounce. Yeah, want to see a little bit more of that. If the Wolverines can get their post involved, Boston inside, Zach inside, they have that size advantage. Nice job of posting up, keeping the defender behind him, never allowing him to get around in front in a strong finish. Rosenberg. Bruneal ahead, Dante. Spin move, shot block, Chicago State possession. DeMarcos dishes off. Contact, no call, no foul called. It's kind of rare for this game. Absolutely. We've been calling everything, and all of a sudden two players collide and no call at all. Three-pointer won't go for Karras. UVU with their 14th rebound. 
Now watch Chicago State here. Let's see if they switch to this man. They're in a zone right now. Let's see if they, at some point in this possession, switch to the man-to-man. -man. They've done it multiple times. Brunel for three. Now several players out there for Chicago State. I can see Jared Demacos just dead tired. We've had a lot of back-to-back -back action. The Wolverines have made some subs. Chicago State hasn't. Well, you know, altitude does get to some teams that come in here to Utah along the Wasatch Front. Mountains literally 12 minutes away. Jumper outside. Demacos for three. And now we're back to calling everything. <laughs> yep. That foul against Chicago State. Kurt Karras. Yep. Just trying to catch up and be everywhere at the same time. Back in a minute, right here on UVU TV. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Well, we mentioned a couple times that Tracy Dildy, head coach of Chicago State, has played a lot of players this year. He brought 13 on the trip. He's played 11 of them already. Yeah, yeah they're subbing in. I, I think a lot of it has to do with how active they are on defense, getting the full core pressure that they've done, a lot of the switching that they do on defense. And for Chicago State, you got to play multiple players, multiple positions. It's not as if you have just a big guy to match up against a big guy. You know, they're rotating. They, they've, they've done a lot of switching and, and get a lot of guys active on, their, on the defensive end. One thing I wanted to mention too is we got the officials reviewing, not entirely sure what they're reviewing, which play, but. Trying to see if that foul really was on Kirk Harris, I guess. Yeah. Or maybe was Zach in the act of shooting. Yeah, I'm not sure. Couldn't get a, a clear view of which play exactly they were reviewing. I mean, they're huddled up for a long time discussing this and looking at it. I, I think they're going to call a flagrant foul. I've been wrong lately, though, so I better just wait for the official announcement. No, no. It, it, a, it, a delay this long, it, it yeah, better be ab something. Absolutely. Now you see Coach Tracy Dildy explaining his point of view. All right, I think we might be getting close to getting back to action. Good heavens. Yeah, they're going to get they're going to get Boston shooting some free throws. Clark Rosenberg called for the foul, right? Yep. At least that's my understanding, and I think we're going to get an announcement here in just a second. Goobler misses the free throw, and why not? He's, everybody's been standing around for 10 minutes. Boston missed them both. Okay, well, shoot till you make one, Boston, please. So, he was fouled on the previous play, right? So these must be his free throws because he was fouled on the previous play on the dish off from Marcel, right? Because he's shooting four free throws. It's like we're at the state fair watching somebody just, uh, you know, shoot the ball. Do you, do you win like a stuffed animal or something here? That's going to be UVU ball. One of four, and it'll be yeah, UVU, UVU basketball. UVU ball underneath it. You don't expect Boston to be a great free throw shooter. He was only one of two coming into this game. Yeah. He just took four, you know, tonight in that set right there. But that was a big play, and they're still still communicating. One of the referees is still talking to Coach Hunsaker, but you know, big break there for the Wolverines. You know, good chance to get some, some easy points. And they get the possession, too, after the foul. So great opportunity for UVU here. All right. Now we're going to play. Zach Nelson, left hand turnaround. Great delivery from Marcel. 
didn't catch the screening action inside, but that was a very smooth transition for Zach turning over his, to his left hand. Ten second shot clock. Marcos for three. Yeah, and that's one thing that will kill a zone is a very long skip pass like that. Marcel had a long way to go from the uh, free throw line down to the wing. Boston Goobler cannot get that one to go down either. Zach Nelson tied up inside with Joshua Meyer. Meyer wrestled it away. And we're going to walk back down to the other end after the foul on Zach Nelson. Yeah, the, the thing that you're going to see here, too, from the officials is you get, you know, it's just a foul. There's nothing intentional there. But with that flagrant foul being called, yeah. you're going to get the officials, you know, on top of everything, any any action after the fact like, uh, after the fact like that, they're going to be stepping in. They're going to not let anything escalate or get out of hand because of that flagrant foul that was called. But it just seems to slow the game it does. down. And it does. It's and not fun to watch. You know, they're going to be aware of it because they, they have to be. They don't, they don't want anything else to happen. But I, I'm not sure the intention that Clark Rosenberg had on the foul, but the officials are going to, are going to call this extra tight. This is as close as Chicago State has been all night since it was 10 to 6 at least. Backcourt pressure. Now they call it off. Under six minutes to play first half. Turnover. Zach Nelson threw it right into the hands of Johnny Griffin. Johnny Griffin, really nice job of going to get a timeout here from Coach Hunsaker, but a nice job of denying up top. I'm not sure Zach realized that Johnny Griffin was there denying that ball because there was no chance for that to get through. And Johnny Griffin with the finish in transition. Seven straight points for Chicago State has pulled them to within two of Utah Valley. UVU came in here on the season averaging 13 turnovers a game. And by the way, well, I haven't talked about this yet, but Chicago State, folks, they are the number 15 team in the nation in steals per game. Yeah. They average 8.6 steals a game, and there was one right there. Yeah, and so far, the Wolverines have done a terrific job of taking care of the ball. That's only their second turnover, and Chicago State only has two turnovers. So, you know, that was a point of emphasis coming into the week because what Chicago State will do is they're going to be in the passing lanes, they're pressing, they're also going to gamble. They're also going to take chances to come up with steals. So Wolverines have to be aware of that. And you see it there. You don't often see a big guy like Brennan Evans being defended or being denied way be way beyond the uh, the three-point line like that. But that's why they get, those, get all those steals. Wolverines having a little struggle tonight with the Cougars. Looked like they were going to run away with it early. Dante bottom. A confident shot there. I think Dante knew that that ball was going up as soon as it touched his hands. Great rotation, ball movement around the perimeter. Confident shot. Dante's got five. Feels like a ball game all of a sudden, doesn't it? Absolutely. That was a big shot for UVU because they had struggled. Chicago State had the momentum. Let's see if the Wolverines can come up with a turnover or a stop here. Pull the momentum back into their favor. Whoa, NBA three to beat the shot clock. Did not hit the rim, so that will be a shot clock violation. Yeah, that's another great defensive possession. That's the second time that Democracy has had to launch up a really long three at the end of the shot clock. It's so hard to defend, and yeah, it really is. So when you see a couple shot clock violations, you know that the defense is on their game because it's not easy to defense, uh, defend a team for a full 35 seconds. Marcel fouled on his way into the lane. I believe it was Batson. 
Every time Marcel touches that, that ball, if he doesn't have an open shot, he's thinking, I'm going to drive. See here, thought about switching it, but see that open open area in the lane there. It wasn't much. No, I think they called it out a little bit further out, but especially with the rule changes that have been implemented where you know you put a hand on, you put a forearm on, yeah. that's an automatic foul. Marcel Davis into double figures. He's got 11 now. Well, four minutes left here. It's going to be vital and important for UVU to string together some good defensive possessions. Go into the half on a, on a high note. Hanging jumper, Glover. Marcel Davis tried to get it over to Zach Nelson over his head, turnover. That'll bring us to a timeout, UVU. 33-28, Utah Valley on top of Chicago State. Glad you're with us here on UVU TV. Mentioned earlier, UVU's next game will not be a UVU TV game. That's Saturday night, just 48 hours from now. Kansas City will be in here for an 8.30 tip. It'll be on American Sports Networks. Check your local listings, as they say in the biz as to where you might be able to see that one. Or if you just want to listen to the always interesting Matt Peterson, <laughs> tune in on the uh, on the radio or on Wolverine Green and you can listen to us. There you go. Listen to us and watch American Sports Network. Probably won't be synced up, but what the heck. Be worth it. But Jim, a couple of things that stand out to me for UVU. They're shooting the ball great. They're 10 of 20 from the field. Three of six from the three-point line, and they've got to the line 17 times. They're 10 of 17 from the free throw line. Just watching, it doesn't look like they seem to have the flow that they need on their offense. It, it's been stagnant at times. I think you give some credit to Chicago State in switching up their defenses, but just doesn't seem like the Wolverines have had their normal flow on offense. And they've shot the ball well. So if they can couple the, the shooting with the with the, you know, running their sets, getting into a little bit of a rhythm, I think that'll really help them. But once again, Matt, we see that UVU doing a great job against Chicago State's leading scorer, in this case, Clark Rosenberg, scoreless. Yeah. Yeah, Came absolutely. in here averaging 11 points a game. But it's Demakos yeah. who averages five points a game, and he's already got 15. Yeah, we see that so much, don't we? We yeah. see it where a player, we come into a game, and you, you have a player that has a terrific game out of nowhere. And Demakos has kept Chicago State in the game. He's played terrific. Hey, he's got 15 of their 28 points. Just a five-point Utah Valley lead. Chicago State trying to cut it a little closer on this possession. Baseline. Yeah, stepped out of bounds. A unusual possession there as that ball got dumped inside. Haven't seen too many post passes to, to a player inside. One stat that really jumps out to me, Chicago State on the year has attempted 439 threes. Uh, they've only made 127 of them, but that equates to 21 a game. So far, they've shot, they've only shot 10, so they're just about at their average, but turnover there. Chicago State basketball. Yeah, Wolverine's just struggling to get this ball in. See, that's why Chicago State has steals. They're around the ball. They're pressuring the ball. They're not allowing easy passes. They're trying to deny a lot of opportunities. And this press has caused some problems. Wow, Sean Hill pulls the Cougars to an end three. This crowd's awfully quiet. Mitch Bruniel, speaking of quiet, <laughs> missed it, tip won't go. Chicago State's Hill comes away with it. Well, that was kind of an awkward looking play inside. Sean Hill crashing to the floor. And they're calling a travel. 
Wow. A lot of players around the ball. This was good defense here from Dante. Brendan comes over with the help. Yeah, there was no, no Wolverine player touched that ball. Zach took a good swipe at it, but it, he didn't hit it. I think that was the right call there. Officials collaborating. Four turnovers for each of these teams. Zach Nelson back up and in. Again, hurting him inside. Marcel with the drive. You know, Zach and Brendan and Boston, when they're in that game, they're going to be able to clean up a lot of those offensive rebounds and have some good looks for some putbacks. Zach hasn't missed a shot yet. He's got 11 points. Under two minutes to play here in the first half. Glover misses the three. Dante Williams with the rebound for UVU. Dante takes a long three. And he's fouled on it. He'll get to shoot three free throws. Wow, that was NBA plus about two feet. Yeah, absolutely. Dante pushed the action in transition. Yeah, no, clearly a foul there. Johnny Griffin. Yeah, Johnny Griffin not not going vertical, falling down on Dante, but you know, good to see Dante get rewarded because he pushed the action in transition. You know, nice dish off to Zach right at the top, and he just simply spaced out to the wing, found an open, open area, and got the ball back. For Griffin, his first, that was the 13th team foul against Chicago State. They've got four players with two fouls each, and five other players with one each. Great sign for UVU, 20 free throws after this one and counting in the first half. So. Critical free throws from Dante. Yeah, and Saturday against New Mexico State, they had six in the whole game, and yeah. all six came from Dante Williams. He made all six, by the way. And you can see why, because I mean, the way that he's playing, he's playing to draw fouls, and when he gets to the line, he's knocking them down. Glover connects. Six-point lead for UVU with about a minute ten to go. Coach Dildy calling out a ton of different numbers for their defense. This is, I heard him call it 54, I've heard him call 11, I've heard him call 12. Doing a lot of different things. Too confusing? Not for his team, but maybe for the Wolverines and recognizing it. Five seconds to shoot, Marcel Davis all the way to the rack. Uh, great job of Marcel staying active, not settling for just catching the ball in the perimeter. He knew he had beaten his defender, had him on his hip, and really nice job of curling down the lane line for the layup. Marcel's got 13 points. Long rainbow three won't go. Marcel Davis, so oh, a little foul as Brendan Evans got tied up that time with Trayvon Palmer. Foul's going to go against Palmer of Chicago State. Uh, I think it was those two that were battling. You see, yeah, absolutely, see Brennan doing a nice job of creating contact on Palmer. Good, yes. Uh, surprised they're not looking at that because when you see Palmer here, I, mean, I understand him reaching over Brendan to go for the ball, but wow. you know, when he grabbed him around the neck, Palmer a little frustrated maybe. He's scoreless tonight. Came in here averaging seven and a half points a game and a team high 5.1 rebounds. He's only had one rebound in the first half. And you know, one thing we know about Brent, he's not afraid to get in there and mix it up. <laughs> That's for sure. Nothing dirty. He's, he gets physical. You saw that that replay. That's exactly how Brennan plays. You know, that shot goes up from the wing. You know, he's not just standing in the paint and looking up, waiting for the ball. He went and found. The defender found Trayvon Palmer, put his body on him. That was textbook for how you rebound. You create the contact, get the inside body position. 
14 to 6 run for UVU. We'll see if Chicago State, who looks like they're playing for the last shot, can cut this 10 point lead down. And what else? Shot will count. Demakos has 17 points in the first half. And <laughs> what else? Brendan Evans with a foul. Marcos has done it a couple ways. He's three of five from the three-point line. He's seven of nine from the field. This will be his first free throw, but you know, when he's not shooting a three, that play is exactly what he's trying to do. He's a driver. He's done that multiple times going to his strong hand. He hasn't once driven to the left. He goes to his right hand, draws contact, and just about every finish that he's had, it's been off the backboard. Four, four seconds left. See if the Wolverines can get a good shot. Dante can hit from here. Oh, just shy. That's how we'll send him to the locker room. That was a pretty uh, interesting finish on that one. UVU leading Chicago State at halftime, 42 to 35. It's pretty entertaining first half. Matt Peterson, uh, UVU looked like they were going to run away with it, quite frankly, yeah. for a while there when they were up by 10, and all of a sudden. Chicago State came roaring back to cut it to within two. Then yeah. things got a little chippy. A lot of fouls, a lot of physicality going on. What do you expect? Uh, well, your analysis of the first half, and then tell me what you think the second half is well, going to look like. Yeah, I think the first half, you, know, you did have the physicality. You had a lot of free throws shot, yeah. a lot of fouls being committed. And I thought both teams struggled a little bit to get into any type of a rhythm. You know, the Wolverines have 42 points, Chicago State 35, so they scored points, but I think a lot of it was at the free throw line. Neither team could really establish anything on offense as far as rhythm goes and momentum. It was kind of back and forth, you know. Yeah. The Wolverines stretched it out. They couldn't keep it stretched out. Chicago State fought back in it. So I, I look in the second half, I look for a lot of, you know, a lot more physicality. Um, Which means I, probably I, a lot more fouls. Probably more free throws. Great. But, but to me, it's all about Jared DeMarco so far. 18 points oh, yeah. for him. You know, he has been the catalyst for Chicago State, and the Wolverines don't have a, haven't found an answer for him yet. So he's really been the one that's that's driven Chicago State to where they are right now. Yeah, I'm looking at the score sheet. DeMarco's has 18. The next closest, yeah. closest player for Chicago State is uh, Sean Hill with just five points. It's a yeah. one-man wrecking crew right now. Yeah, and you had some good offense from UVU. Marcel Davis, yeah. 13 points. Zach Nelson, 11 points. So it's good to see them active. But... You know, you've got to have, it's got to be a team effort from both both sides. The Wolverines did a terrific job holding Clark Rosenberg, no points. You know, yeah. and he was the one called for that flagrant foul. So they've done a good job of keeping the leading scores on the season for Chicago State, you know, in check so far. It's just been uh, Jared Demakos has, uh, has led the charge. And, and I don't know if we should talk about the fouls that much, but it was kind of uneven. Chicago yeah. State called for 14, UVU called for just eight. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that the way that the UVU Wolverines played, I think that was pretty indicative as far as how the fouls were called. I thought UVU was being a lot more aggressive on offense, but you know, it is what it is. Can't change the fouls that were called. Well, fans, you can see some of the stats there. Field goal shooting, Chicago State, that 13 of 30 represents 43%. UVU a tad bit better at 46%. Three pointers, uh, both teams hit three. Free throws though, because of yeah. that, because of all those fouls called against Chicago State, UVU's outscored them by nine just from the free throw line and yeah. four block shots already for Chicago State. That's amazing. The, the Wolverines, 22 free throws, 26 field goal attempts. It's yeah. not often that you see your free throws match your field goal attempts. So that's a good sign. If I'm Coach Hunsaker, I'm saying that's awesome because it puts Chicago State in foul trouble. That will come into play later on in the game. And what it does is it gives your team easy opportunities, easy buckets, uh, easy easy chance for points. I, I might have missed it. Did, uh, 15 points off Chicago State's bench yeah. compared to just two for UVU. We're going to take a quick break. More halftime coming back after this one. Utah Valley leading Chicago State 42-35. It all comes down to this. 14 teams battle their way through the bracket for a chance to punch their ticket to the big dance. Be a part of the madness in Las Vegas, March 11th to 14th. Go all in and witness who goes home a champion at Orleans Arena. The 2015 WAC Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament. Tickets on sale now at orleansarena.com. 
Back at the UCCU Center, Wolverines of Utah Valley leading the Chicago State Cougars 42-35. Hey, we have a special guest stopping by our sideline booth here at halftime. This is Greg Williams, head wrestling coach here at Utah Valley. I, I love it when you stop by because I don't get to go see many wrestling matches, so you're like my only update on what's going on. How's the season going, my friend? Well, the season's going good. We just had a pretty nice win over Air Force. Uh, wow, nice. Uh, but uh, we've got a younger team this year. We've got some good experience at the lower weights and at heavyweight we have some returning uh, guys who've gone to nationals a couple times. And so um, some good leadership, but the guys are working hard and trying to progress to try to get more guys to nationals this year. Now, when you say a younger team, like a lot of freshmen that you brought in or guys that are back from LDS missions or all a of the above? Of, yeah, a little bit of uh, both of those. We've had more uh, new guys in the lineup, new yeah. starters. Wow. Uh, a couple of first-year freshmen who haven't redshirted. And, and wrestling that redshirt year really helps you, but we're just in a position where we needed to wrestle this year. We'll redshirt them next year. All right, now somebody told me there's a couple of really big matches coming up. Is that this weekend? Yeah, it's, uh, tomorrow night and Saturday. We have uh, number 20 ranked uh, Oregon State tomorrow night. And nice. then Stanford at 3.30 on Saturday. They're ranked 25. Wow. So. Excellent. So what's the chances for UVU fans to come out and see some uh, – some upsets, I guess it would be, on both well, tomorrow and Saturday. Some great wrestling, yeah. Um, uh, Stanford and Oregon State both are solid all the way through their lineup. And with our better guys, um, we're going to be real competitive. Some of the weights where they're ranked and we got a newer guy, it, um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily expect a, an upset. But the main thing is we want to see our guys go out and fight, no matter who they're wrestling, just keep progressing, scoring in the third period getting stronger as the match goes on. So as a head coach, tell me what the goal is. Is it is it to win the match or is it to get the guys ready to go to nationals? Postseason is everything for wrestling. It's trying to get as many guys to nationals as possible, really? trying to get guys on the podium. We're not really worried about our dual record. Um, it's just it, the main thing is getting guys to nationals. That's what they're here for. All right, I'm going to try to get there tomorrow night. So tell me the studs that I need to look for for UVU. Uh, 125, Jason. Um, and uh, we've got Jason uh, Tolbert at 25, Jade Rouser at 33, and our heavyweight Adam Fager. All three ranked in the top 33. All three have a good chance to go to nationals. Heavyweight Adam Fager. Can I take him? <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> really? How heavy is he when you say uh, heavyweight? About 270. Never mind. Yeah. Never yeah. mind. And he's All right. pretty solid. Coach Greg Williams, hey, I, I really am going to try to stop by, my friend. Good. It'll be some good wrestling. And quite frankly, we could use some wrestlers, I think, in this second half. Did you <laughs> did you see how physical it was getting? Yeah, yeah. Well, wrestlers are really good for designated foulers, so <laughs> we're good. Exactly. We might need you. Greg Williams, head wrestling coach here at UVU. Okay. Good luck to you, my friend. Thank you. Good to see you. We're going to take another quick break. Back with your second half, UVU leading 42-35. set to start our second half here at the UCCU Center. Utah Valley with a seven-point lead over Chicago State. Utah Valley, by the way, six and one on the season when leading at halftime. Chicago State has not won a game on the road this season. I don't think we've talked too much about that, Matt, but uh, quite frankly, they're hanging tough here on the road. Yeah, absolutely. I think it'll be vital for UVU to start the second half with a ton of life, a ton of energy, because you, know, you, you almost want to give Chicago State no hope because, you know, as you said, it would be a new experience for them winning on the road. And you know that they know that. You know that they have that in their mind, that they haven't won a game on the road, and this is a great opportunity for them. So the Wolverines have to come out strong. Especially that and, man right there, Zach yeah, Nelson. Yeah, he's, he's had a great game. He's kind of been under the radar here. As you mentioned, perfect all over. You know, four or four from the field, through, through one of one from three, two of two from the free throw line. He's got five rebounds, and and you know he needs to he needs to be that influence, and he needs to be the impact because he's got a size advantage, he's got a skill advantage inside. You know, Boston's been a Boston's had a lot of really. Uh, The 
the uh, the clock itself shows 15 minutes rather than 20 minutes. Sorry if you heard me saying that. I stood no, that's up okay. right as I noticed that. They had just They're 15 minutes on the clock. Now they fixed it, but well, that, there they we go. They were thinking of the halftime. That's what they put on. Uh, yeah. That's what they put on for halftime. 15 minutes. You know, you should be a coach because nothing gets by you. I wouldn't well, have noticed that for who knows how long. I like doing that detective work. That was fun in the first half, going over there, finding out what was going on. The official's going to throw you out of the game one of these times. Stick your nose in those huddles. You'd have to do the show all by yourself. You, I can't do that. you like that? No. Right, I'll be, I'll you, be are, you are the glue, my friend. Demacos missing off the bat. Utah Valley coming back the other way. Yeah, one of the first times we've seen Demacos go to his left. Good defense there from Zach. He's not as comfortable going to his left as he is to his right. Boston Goobler. Wow. If they're going to call it that close. Well, you know, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Joshua Meyer, he only played six minutes in the first half because of foul trouble. First offensive possession, 30 seconds down. What does he get? He gets another foul. So He's got three. UVU forced to, forced to call a timeout. Forty-two, thirty-five. The score will stay here for this. Uh, the first coach's timeout of the second half always becomes a sixty-second timeout. So we'll stay here and analyze this one a little more to death if we can. Marcel Davis, thirteen points. Zach Nelson, eleven. Dante Williams, eight. Five points from Boston Goobler. Brendan Evans, two off the bench. Uh, Bruniel with three. Mitch Bruniel, very quiet yeah. night. He, very he has, quiet. He has had a quiet night, something that we're not accustomed to. I think it's you know, a lot to do with Marcel and, and what we've talked about with him and, uh, and Zach getting the ball out. I, I look for Mitch to be a little bit more aggressive here. And I think he's got three shots, so not his normal attempts, but I think he'll be uh, he'll be a little more uh, a little bit more forceful when he gets uh, when he gets the opportunity. A lot of folks have asked me if I think Zach Nelson is suffering from sophomore jinx because he had a phenomenal freshman year last year. Yeah, it was uh, on the newcomer team, all whack newcomer team, and uh, played a pivotal role for UVU winning the regular season whack championship this year. He was preseason second team all whack. Yep. So far, I think he's not played as well as he's capable of playing. You know, and it, it's it's a different role for him this year, as you see Dante. Nice corner shot. That was a very well executed inbounds play. But you know, just a quick point about Zach. It's a different role for him. You know, last year he had Holton, he had Ben, he had a couple other guys. You know, this is a completely different role for him, even though he's still starting. He's got to take on. Uh, going to take on a different responsibility. Batson has his shot blocked by Dante Williams, who just hit the three. He leads the break. Going to slide over to the corner, slow it down. Wide open for three again. Missed this one. Bruniel tips it out to Davis. Shot won't go. He's foul from behind. And I say Batson got him on the head from behind. Yeah, I think it was a combination there, Mitch Bruniel and Zach Nelson swatting that ball out right to Marcel. Yeah, I mean, it's just every possession that Marcel gets it. And that time he did a great job. You see, he didn't force the action. You know, he saw Meyer inside step up to stop the drive, and that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You get fouled from behind and get to the line. Marcel Davis, 13 points tonight. He leads the scoring attack for UVU. And uh, we talked about Mitch, Jim, on offense. I, I, we've, got to, we've got to keep our eye on Clark Rosenberg. He averages 11 and a half points per game. It's a knockdown jumper there from Josh Meyer. But Rosenberg hasn't even scored. So much like Mitch will be on offense for UVU, Rosenberg will be for Chicago State. So the two leading scores for each of these teams, or the leading score, rather, for each of these teams, pretty much uh, just shut down so yeah. far, yeah. leaving it to role players. Nice play, nice feed from Zach Nelson. Dante has the shot swatted out of bounds. Yeah, trying to catch 
You see the ball comes into Zach Nelson at the high post, trying to get the overplay. You see Rosenberg way out there, trying to get uh, Dante on the back cut. Back to live action. Dante for three. Dante Williams lighting it up. He's got 14 points. Davis has 14. Nelson has 11. Two, two quick threes from Dante. 12 point lead, largest of the game for Utah Valley. Wolverines have not trailed. Yeah, really good drive and kick there too from Marcel. But when the shot's not there for Marcel, he's, he's dishing. Palmer fouled on his way to the hole. Boston Goobler trying to draw the charge. Going to get called for the block instead. For Goobler, his first foul, team's first of this half. Boston, by the way, career high five points in that first half. This is a good sign for UVU. Marcel, 14 points. Dante, 14 points. Zach, 11 points. Now, there's a, there's a drop-off after that, but a lot of what we've seen on offense is one player carrying the load. This is exactly what they need to have, multiple guys carrying the load. And if you could get Mitch coming along with that, it would be in great shape. Utah Valley will maintain possession. 11 point lead with 17 18 left. Wolverine setting up their offense. Goobler will take a long jumper up top. Rebound comes down to Demacos. With this zone that the Wolverines are playing, they're going to have to keep an eye on Demakos. He's heard him from the three. He's he said three of five. Always got to have an eye on where he is. And it looks like now they've gone to a man. Demakos, my goodness, what a game this kid is having. He's got 20 points. Seven, eight of 11 shooting. Jump ball called, possession arrow, Utah Valley direction. It's the same thing from Demakos. It's that drive. He drove left hand. Really nice sp spin move back to the basket. It's so amazing. Only averages five points, as you said, on, on the season. But he's got 20 points tonight. Marcel Davis on the turnaround. Can't get it down. Chicago State on the run. Paris with it. Over to Superman. No shot for him. Harris forcing the action inside. He traveled. That'll go in the book as a turnover for Chicago State. That'll be their fifth. Yeah, Marcel did a really nice job of fighting over the screen. And you see how he keeps his hands up. You know, the tendency there, you put your arms out, you put your, your forearm out. Marcel doing a great job standing, standing straight up, forcing Karras to go through his body. And he wasn't able to do it. Brendan Evans into the game for UVU, replaces Zach Nelson. Marcel Davis with it, double teamed. Chicago State now trapping. We've seen so much from them tonight. Davis blows by everybody, lays it up and in for his 16th point tonight. His career high is 21. He might break that tonight. Still got 15 and a half minutes to do it. See that stat? Both teams have hit 15 shots from the yeah. floor. Twisting, turning, won't go down that time for Rosenberg. Plus, his heart's still scoreless. He's 0 for 3 from the floor. Brunel for 3. 
You know, the bigs for the Wolverines tonight have done a great job of reading the defense when they get the ball at the high post. We've seen a couple of shots. We've seen some drives. We've seen some skip passes, some dishes. You know, that pass was terrific. Very long bounce pass from Brendan right on the money. Timeout on the floor. Utah Valley with their biggest lead of the game. We pursue excellence in the classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. Back to live action here at the UCCU Center. Karras trying to penetrate and a foul on Brendan Evans, and he is just astounded. If he's in the game, they're going to call a foul on him just for breathing, I think. And that was great defense. I didn't, I don't know where the foul was. All right, that, that was away from the ball. I, I didn't see it. I was watching the ball there. I didn't see Brendan Evans foul. Well, if we show the replay again, you'll have to walk us through it. But Utah Valley leading by 14, their biggest lead of the ball game. Again, if you joined us late, UVU looked like they're going to run away with it. Eight to nothing. All right, here it is now. Brendan Evans wears number yeah. 20. Brendan At Evans out on the switch. Yeah, there it is. That's just that right hand. You know, it's just ever so subtle of a of contact out near the free throw line. And watch his right hand. It gets into the chest, into the stomach of Karras here. Good grief. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, there's been a lot more. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Brendan. Poor guy. Brendan Evans called for three fouls. And, you know, Chicago State. Uh, we're talking about fouls. They've had 13 players foul out of games this year. They've been whistled for a lot of fouls. 470 of them coming in here. Compare that to UVU being whistled for 317. So almost 160 more fouls for Chicago State this season. And I think that's why they rotate so many more guys. We made. They have you, to. You, yeah, you They're have fouling to. out. Yeah, and, and you know it's tiresome to play the defense that they try and play because they extend the pressure. They're active. They trap. They do their they do their full court pressure, and they foul because they're they're uh, you know so active out on the perimeter. And you know the interesting thing is is it's it's the risk reward game. You risk getting foul calls, which they get, but you also have a reward of getting the steals, and that's why they 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 have so many steals on the year. UVU leads by 14. Chicago State possession. Palmer missing inside. Put back it won't go down for Meyer. Zach Nelson with the rebound for UVU. Nelson gives over to Goobler. Outside Davis. Mitch Bruniel for three. Missed that one. Zach tried to keep it alive, but Chicago State comes away with it. Under 14 minutes left here at the UCCU Center. Utah Valley four and three in this building this season. A place that they have traditionally been pretty tough in. Meyer hits that one. Here comes another type zone pressure, one, two, two. Ball back into the 2-3. Two, Three-pointer, three Zach Nelson, bottom. Zach's not scared to put it up from three. Launched uh, 66 of them now this season. And he trails the play a lot of times, too, because he's the inbounder. So he trails that play, and that, that, that position on the court, I think he really likes because he can just fall into it as he's coming down the court. Demakos 
Couldn't get a shot off there. Instead, it comes from the left side. That being Sean Hill. Wolverines on the run. Bruniel to the hole. There's your senior experience right there. Yeah, you know, I, I can't say enough about how the wings are running in transition. They're getting out wide. Dante's done a great job. Mitch has done a nice job. The perimeter players, when the Wolverines secure the rebound, they're out wide, and Marcel is picking them apart with those long outlet passes. Three-pointer is good from Trayvon Palmer. Before he hit that, that 17-point lead for UVU was their biggest of the game. And you gotta be you gotta be on guard for those long three-point shots. The Chicago State take, takes a lot of threes. And that's a quick way for them to get back in the game if they can hit those. Palmer's first shot of the night. Marcel Davis. That would have been nice to finish that one off, but instead he'll shoot two free throws fouled by Sean Hill. And Boston, look at look at Boston on the paint there. You know, senses that Marcel's gonna drive. He does a nice job of keeping Joshua Meyer up the lane, moving him up the lane, giving uh, Marcel a little bit more space. Sean Hill picks up his second foul, third of the half for Chicago State. Checking into the game, Darius Hamilton for the first time tonight. Boston Gubler takes a seat. Marcel Davis now, 17 points. Make it 18. And UVU is already over their season average. They came in here averaging 59.3 a game. Got 61 already with still 12 minutes to play. Chicago State, meanwhile, averaging 58 points a game. Now down by 16. Jaden Jackson also checked in during that free throw timeout. Palmer lost the handle. Went off Zach Nelson. When we get back, it'll be Chicago State basketball underneath their own glass. UVU leading by 16 points here at the UCCU Center. Back at the UCCU Center. Utah Valley by 16 over Chicago State. By the way, Grand Canyon is destroying Kansas City tonight at Grand Canyon. And uh, I mean, it's basically almost over in the second half. There's still 10 or 12 minutes to play there, but it's over. So if UVU holds on to win here, there will be a four way tie in the WAC for second place yeah. behind New Mexico State. And two of those teams tied will be UVU and Kansas City, and they'll play on Saturday night. So UVU needs to take care of business yeah. here for the next 11:46. Well, and you said it. There is still a lot on the line for yep. both teams. For both teams, there's a ton on the line, and so can't take any any game lightly. You can't take any play lightly, be, lightly because it can uh, it can mean a lot in the end. Seventeen seconds on their shot clock to work with. They'll get it in. Meyer can't get it down. Darius Hamil Hamilton pulls down the rebound for UVU. Hamilton, uh, interesting situation. Junior from San Antonio, Texas, but wow. Never mind. <laughs> I can't even talk about Darius when Mitch is going to light it up. You know, again, you know, four seconds, three seconds, whatever it was, goes off the shot clock. Is Basket's going to count. Yeah, Karras with a nice drive there, but. That's exactly how you want to want to run the transition. 
As you see the replay here from uh, Kurt Karras, just Jaden Jackson called for the foul there. Just driving down the lane line there. Back to that three. Darius got that ball, outletted it to Marcel. There was a definite miscommunication and trans transition for Chicago State. Mitch was wide open on the baseline. Hamilton pulls down another rebound. Darius Hamilton, Jr., San Antonio, Texas. He's been injured for a lot of this season, hasn't been able to get in there many minutes. You see him fighting for it there, wants to make the most of when he does get in. Coach Dick Hunsaker feels like Darius Hamilton can really help his squad down the stretch going into the WAC tournament here in another six weeks. Man, you see that move that he just made, Jim? I mean, we don't see that. Oh, nice block. block. Zach Nelson with the block. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, that's fine. It was the action. It's, Zach cut you off. Yeah, he did. <laughs> I'll take it, though. That was a, a great play. Just going to comment on the basket there from, uh, from Darius and how physical he was on that post play. He didn't convert, but he got that ball. Here we see the replay of Zach. Terrific recovery as uh, Trayvon Palmer trying to go with the reverse layup. Just great recovery speed there from, from Zach. But back to back to the point with Darius, you know, physical. He just backed his uh, his defender down, got an easy shot. Love to see that physical presence inside, and that's exactly what he can bring. Yeah, Darius, six foot eight. Uh, UVU, like several teams, does not release the weights of their players. I heard rumors that the WAC is going to require that next year of all oh, the teams. Interesting. I'm not sure that's true or not. It might just be in the uh, rumored stage at this point. Williams continues to hit the free throws. He's the number one free throw shooter in the WAC. UVU leading 66 47. Dante's got 16 points. Trailing only Marcel Davis's 18. Charge this time on Chicago State. We've seen Mitch uh, match up here with uh, Jared Demacus. Going to see the replay. Mitch moving his feet, anticipating where the drive is going to take place. And but Mitch if you're moving your feet, isn't that a foul on well, the defender? Well, I meant before the drive happened. <laughs> I, I meant when he was, when uh, you get a foul here on Demacos, back to back. But what I meant, Jim, was moving his feet when Demacos was still standing on the perimeter. Okay. If and, that makes sense. And, and here's Demacos. His feet are moving, yeah, too. Yeah, his feet are moving, but, <laughs> but Mitch was not yet. Demacos was not yet driving the ball. Mitch had active feet well before. That's what I was referring to. Two fouls on Demacos, by the way. 66-47, UVU's biggest lead. It's 19. And let's not forget, Chicago State had cut it to two back when it was 28-26. They came within three. 33-30, trailed at halftime 42-35, but UVU's really pushed it out here in the second half. Austin Goobler. Austin Goobler continues to add to that career high. What a great move there from Boston with the left-hand shot. Chicago State pushing the ball in their own right. Wolverines caught a little bit off balance on the transition here. I think they get Zach Nelson with the, with the foul feet, on the body. His feet were not moving. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to hold that over my head, I aren't am. you? Well, I, I might have to ask the guys for a replay so I can show you what I was talking about. No, it won't help. I, I am evidently too old and too dumb to understand that whole judgment call. Your feet are moving. They're not deep. I'll just go. I don't, I don't think that's true. I'll go. Yeah, which part? Too old or the, too dumb? Both. <laughs> Thanks. You're a nice guy. 68-49. <laughs> Perfect job of handling the trap. Boston making himself available in the middle there. A great dish off to Mitch. Another example of the bigs. The bigs have been great passers tonight setting up their teammates. Wow. All of a sudden, both teams looking a lot better than they did in the first half. Of you breaking the press. Marcel can't get it down. Stuck at 18 points. Demacos just two points so far yeah. here in the second half. Yeah, and Mitch has guarded him a lot. I think that's helped. And 
just Demacos hasn't been able to score, and the offense has dried up as a result of that for Chicago State. They, you know, they haven't been able to find anything on offense. Boston Goobler tracks down loose ball rebound. Goobler playing a heck of a game. Yeah, he is. Seven points, three rebounds. Three of five shooting for the freshman. So Coach Hemsaker, too, just tell Marcelli as he was bringing that ball up, let's run a little bit of clock with the time and score situation. The Wolverines are going to get get catches and try and work that clock in their favor. They don't want to get up tempo in Chicago State life. Zach Nelson and one. You got four Utah Valley players in double figures, and now they're just going to fight it out to see who has game high. Marcel Davis has 18, but Zach right on his heels with 16. Dante was 16. Mitch up to a 13 now. Boston Goobler was seven. Probably the best scoring from the starting five from yep. UVU this season. Absolutely, without question. And the only downside is is the bench. You know, only still only two points, but you know, I think they'll take this. You know, it's not it's not usual for the Wolverines to have this little scoring. Dante misses the three. Chicago State with a rebound. I think Dante is going to get subbed out here because just because he missed a three. Well, offensive rebound, but <laughs> you shoot it with 30 seconds to go, more than 30 seconds to go in the shot clock. You want to run some clock. Coach Hunsaker wanted to run some clock in that situation. But back to what we were saying, yeah, that, that's those are great numbers from the starting five, just spectacular numbers. Mitch Bruniel pulls down another rebound. That's his sixth. Dante trying to get the alley-oop to Zach Nelson. Chicago State coming back the other way, though. Zach has hurt his finger, Jim. He might have hit it on the rim or the backboard. I think, I think he got it. When I saw a little bit on the replay, I saw. I think he might have got his hand caught in the net, but he's definitely hurting, grabbing his index finger. Well, index finger on his right hand. Well, he's dribbling with it. I don't know if you could hear Dick Hunsager said, hold the ball. Yeah, behind him. You know, the Wolverines are going to run clock here. Under seven minutes to play. They lead it by 19. They've led by as many as 21. Marcel Davis, shot blocked, fouled on his way to the hole. A foul called against Anthony Glover. Here's, here's the foul and just the reach in on number two. That's Anthony Glover. 72-53, Wolverines by 19. classroom and strive to achieve our potential. We compete on the field with integrity, on the court with respect, and in the pool with distinction. We are strong leaders in our community and gain values from our biggest fans. We continue the legacy of commitment to our universities, to our coaches, to our teammates, and most importantly to you. We learn, we compete, we inspire. We are the Western Athletic Conference. UVU's hit 10 out of 20 shots here in the second half, but Chicago State struggling. Here's that replay. Is this where Zach yeah. hurt his finger? Yeah, there it is, right in the net. Ouch. Yeah, you can break a finger like that. Here was the shot from Dante. Still 30-something seconds on the shot clock after yeah. Coach Hunsager told his team to hold the ball. That's one, a no-no, Dante. You know, one thing I like, Jim, is uh, I think has really driven the success for UVU tonight is you know, 22 of 46 from the field. On their 22 makes, they've had 16 of those assisted. Wow. And that's it's great to see the unselfish basketball, sharing, passing, you know, 
16 assists on 22 makes is good. And then they haven't turned the ball over. Such a point was made of Chicago State and how many steals they come up with. UVU only five turnovers tonight. That's that's been pretty pretty good from ball handling standpoint. Marcel Davis connects on the front end but misses the back end. He's got 19 points again. His career high is 21. By the way, his career high in assist is eight, and he's got seven. Just got to wonder how long uh, some of these starters will be out there now with 6:25 to play in UVU up by 20. Glover, long jumper won't go. Marcel Davis comes away with a rebound. Attack of a game. 19 points, seven assists, five rebounds. Yeah. For Marcel Davis. Just a junior. He'll be back next season as well. As will Dante Williams. As will Zach Nelson. As will Boston Goobler. Only starter they're losing, Mitch Bruneal. To graduation. Jaden Jackson. Over to Zach Nelson for three. Chicago State rebound. Glover misses the baseline jumper. Zach Nelson pulls down his ninth rebound. One more for a double double to go along with those 16 points. UVU's done a great job of tightening up their defense here. What have they given up? 18 points in the second half after giving up 35 in the first. And they've really put the clamps down. You know, what success the Chicago State had in the first half, Wolverines have certainly taken that away. Mitch Brunel, shot clock was winding down. Jaden Jackson battles for the rebound. Got raked across the face when he did so. Tesmer can't finish, and Wolverines come away with it. Four and a half to play. Foul going to go against Anthony Glover. It'll be his third, team's ninth of this half. 23 fouls whistled against Chicago State, 12 against Utah Valley in the game. Marcel Davis missing that one. He had 20 points against Grand Canyon in the loss. He's got 19 tonight. Another rebound. Got six rebounds. I think from him, Jim, from his perspective, or at least me watching him, it was from the it was from the get-go. It really was. I think he set the tone really early. And he's carried on and carried that tone for the entire game. Jaden Jackson penetrates in contact. He'll shoot a couple. 344 to play when we get back from this break. Jaden Jackson will be at the free throw line. UVU leading by 20. Point lead for Utah Valley over Chicago State. Still got 344 to play. It looks like Utah Valley is going to end up in a four way tie for second place after this game because Grand Cannon is destroying Kansas City.
See if you can get Willie to give you whatever he's thrown out there, Jim. I don't know, but I need to scream like a girl or something. <laughs> we'll wait till this is over with. Good gravy. Whatever that is, is pretty valuable. He's going to kill some. Oh, great. We didn't get to see who he killed with the chair. After all of that. Good gracious, that was loud. All right. Can I jinx Willie? Jaden Jackson free throw good. That foul, by the way, was on Johnny Griffin, his second, as we went to break. Jackson's first point tonight. Jaden Jake Jackson, the junior transfer from Salt Lake Community College. On the board with two free throws. 21 point lead matches UBU's largest. Three won't go. It'll belong to Chicago State. Eli Robinson into the game. Alex Carr. Brendan Evans, Jaden Jackson. Marcel Davis, and now Marcel's coming out. So Marcel Davis will not get a career high tonight, but a very nice game with 19 points. Six rebounds, seven assists. Probably his best game as a Wolverine. He didn't, I don't know if we have the turnover numbers for him, but he hasn't turned the ball over. He's his best game that I've seen him play by far. One. One turnover, yeah. I mean, they only have, what, five as a team. So. Yeah. Great game from Marcel. Corey Cardwell, the walk-on, also into the game now. Riverton, Utah, senior. Corey walked on last year. Traveled with the team. Only saw action in one game last year. This year he's seen a little bit more. This is yep. the eighth game that he's, Corey's been in. Actually started a game. Yeah. Jade Jackson. Final. Wolverines work that clock down in the last two possessions. Uh, Wolverines go to that 1-4 flat set where they get their offensive guy up top. And that time Chicago State made an adjustment. They brought an additional guy up almost like they were playing a 2-3 zone with two top defenders. And Jaden said, OK, I'll just pull up and hit the three. I can't tell you how many players on UVU's team have told me as I travel with the team on road trips that, you know, Jaden in practice just lights it up. He's considered the best shooter on yep. the team, but for whatever reason in the game, uh, things just haven't fallen for him. Uh, if that ever starts happening, they say, look out. No, you can see it. I mean, he's got he's got the ability to shoot and some skill off the ball as well as on the ball. Alex Carr not able to control that one. A rare turnover for UVU. Just their Sixth one tonight. Yeah, you know, and, and haven't made a point of it for a little bit. Uh, Clark Rosenberg, leading scorer, one of the key players for the game. You know, he he's got zero points, and the other key player, Trayvon Palmer, he's only got four points. So focusing in, this guy's been the story. Yeah, right there. Demakos now 22 points. Yeah, but the other two guys, you can tell the game plan was centered around those two with a focus on everybody of course but and those two definitely were taken out of the game luckily for Chicago State they had Demako step up otherwise it'd be a different a different story and different score Gonna get this one four flat again with Corey Cardwell up top coach Tracy Dildy telling his team to back off. Corey launches the three as the shot clock ran out. UVU controls it. Jade's going to put up another three. You hit one, it's in your blood. Absolutely. Not afraid to fire. You know, in this, uh, it's good experience for these guys, Corey and Eli. And Alex Carr gets, gets, uh, some playing time here, but you see the foul here called. They call that on Corey. I wonder if they called that. I believe they called that on Corey, not not Jaden. But 
Good, good game time experience here for a lot of these guys. Oh, called it. Well, yeah, maybe. One and one situation. 78-56. These two teams will see each other again on February 28th in Chicago. That'll be the second to last regular season game for Utah Valley. Just 10 games left for Utah Valley in the regular season after this one. last minute and 10 seconds. Well, another wire to wire victory. They did this at home against Seattle. Their only blemish at home in the WAC is against Grand Canyon, a game that you were just uh, very frustrated that they lost that game. Deion Goodman losing the handle there, turnover Utah Valley. And one. Shot won't go for Batson. And he was fouled. Darius Hamilton. You know when you when you've got bench in there yeah. uh, they're trying to prove themselves yep. they're still playing hard they're not trying to run out the clock even though a coach might want them to yeah. they want to play hard. Uh, absolutely Here, here's the thing you know, the, the players you know, they don't get as much playing time as others of course. And uh, I've, I've been in their shoes before, and it's great experience. You cannot replicate this in practice, so this will be great experience for them. Chicago State's given these players a little bit of a hard time against the, the trap or against the press, so you're exactly right. This is, this is when you want to play. This is when you make your mark with a little play, any little effort that helps. I, I know it will be recognized, so both teams have players that are still playing hard. Alex Carr, a little backcourt trouble, threw that one away. So the turnover stats aren't exactly going to tell the story. That was the ninth turnover for UVU. And yeah, they've had four since in the last three and a half minutes. Didn't have had five entirely before that. Another foul with 23.8 to play. So at the free throw line now, Sean Hill of Chicago State. Chicago State 13 of 15 from the free throw line tonight. You say, well, that's normally pretty good, but UVU 23 of 34 from the yeah. stripe. Wow. I wonder if that's a season high. I don't, I don't know if you know what the season high I, attempt I is not. for free throws, but I can't imagine it would be more than what they shot tonight. 78 points for UVU, their third highest point output this season. And they can run out the clock if Chicago State doesn't foul them. Tracy Dildy jumps up and says, no foul, no foul. So that's how this one is going to end. UVU wins it 78-62, a 16-point win for the Wolverines, who are now 8 and 11 on the season five and three at home Chicago State four and 18 but if you want to take a look at the WAC standings that's the most important thing because now UVU three and two Grand Canyon is about to wrap up their game with Kansas City both of those teams are going to be three and two Seattle idle tonight they're three and two it's a four way tie for second place in the WAC and Kansas City UMKC there takes on Utah Valley 
48 hours from now on this floor here in Orem, Utah. That's going to turn out to be a very key matchup yeah. as the season goes on. Uh, simple to say, I think it's a must win for Utah Valley. Yeah, I mean, if, it's, if they're thinking of having any chance to win this thing. Yeah, it's it's going to be vital. I mean, they, they've already beat Seattle at home. They lost to Grand Canyon at home, so I completely agree with you. You know, that game, this is a big game tonight. You know, it wasn't easy. It was a big game tonight. It's yep. going to be a big game on Saturday. So they, they can't take anything lightly because you know, there is there is so much on the line and a lot left, a lot going to happen. And not to mention we got the tournament too. So yeah. it's it's setting up to be a fun rest of the season for it is, sure. It is going to be fun. Demakos, by the way, finishes with 22 points tonight. Yep. Only four in the second half. But UVU, Davis, 19. Williams, 16. Nelson, 16. Bruniel, 13. You see the field goals there on the 78-62 final. That's... Uh, Basically, just domination by UVU in every every category except maybe block shots. Yeah, a couple things I thought that really led them was the starting group. You know, all, all but Boston in double figure scoring wise, but Boston had seven points. He did a couple other things, you know, many other things that were excellent. So the starters led them, and their defense, you know, for the full 40 minutes just wore down Chicago State. They completely took the leading scores out of it. So. When you can couple that that terrific performance from the starting five, and then you put the defense that the Wolverines clamped down on, that's what won them the game tonight. 44% shooting for Utah Valley. What a game. UVU leads wire to wire. Very nicely done. Tonight's telecast produced by students from the UVU Digital Media Department. This has been a copyrighted production of Utah Valley University and the Wolverine Sports Network. Nice job, folks, uh, up in the broadcast studio. Wolverines win this one, 78-62. For Matt Peterson and our entire UVU TV production crew, I'm Jim McCullough saying good night from Orem, Utah.